Good morning, Pastor Rusty here. I want to share some inspirational thoughts. Well, first and foremost, we do have COVID in our house. My oldest son, Clay, has COVID. Um, he feels like he has the flu. Um, he still has his taste and his smell, and he's still eating. And um, None of the really, really, really bad side effects other than he's a 23-year-old man with the flu, so he's probably miserable. Uh, man COVID, I'm sure, is worse than woman COVID as most wives and mothers can attest to. But I was reading this morning and reading in Mark. And you know, Mark 15, we have we have the crucifixion of Jesus and we have, you know, all the things that led up to that. And one of the things that I'm astounded with as I read this, I can remember being young and being warned about peer pressure and be careful of peer pressure because, you know, those around you are going to pressure you into doing things uh, first of all, that your mom and dad don't want you to do or that God doesn't want you to do. And I hope we know peer pressure is true. It really is there. But I read in Mark fifteen fifteen, here Pilate has been presented with Jesus. And the scripture says in Matthew, and the, uh, you know, the other gospels talk about Matthew. And, you know, he, um, I mean, talk about Pilate. Uh, we, we see that Pilate was warned by his wife. I had a dream, a very disquieting dream about this man. Don't have anything to do with him. Stay away from this. So Pilate was warned, and he, it also, the scripture says, that he could see through what was going on with the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees. He knew that they um, were, were on an ego trip, and you know it was basically nothing concerning Pilate, that they, but they wanted this innocent man killed, and Pilate couldn't find anything with them. He couldn't find anything wrong whatsoever. And so, you know, he says, you know, what do you want me to do with this Jesus? And and he said, you know, they cried out. The chief priest got everybody going, you know, turn Barabbas loose. It's what you do for us every year. Turn somebody loose. We want Barabbas. And so Pilate turns Barabbas loose. And, you know, how, how interesting is, in, in verse 15 of chapter 15 of Mark, says, wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. And I think there you are, full-grown man, a man of power, but a man of politics, too. And you think about what's going on in the world today with politics. Um, it's like people can't see and they surrender to the crowd because, well, the crowd is, you know, dangerous at times. And the crowd, you know, everybody wants to be in fashion or they want to be politically correct and, and you know, and I'm not weighing in politically on any of this. I just know that in my own life, um, peer pressure can be tough. It really can be when, when people push you, you know. There may be some things that I see differently in Scripture than most of the people that I'm around. I don't bring those things up necessarily all the time unless I'm specifically asked about those because it causes all kinds of problems. I've seen ministers lose their ministry simply because they didn't see it the way the power brokers in their particular church saw it or the way their denomination said it had to be. And, and you know, the scripture is vast and unfurling and deep. And, and so many definitions and explanations that we have just come short of what the text actually says. It's funny, so people can be real studious on one section of scripture and then they can just take whatever the party line is on the other. Nonetheless, getting back to Pilate, he gave in to peer pressure. He simply took an innocent man. He tried to wash his hands of the situation, but he is as guilty as those crying crucify. And I'm the one in the crowd crying crucify. I am, you know, Jesus died for my sins. Um, I'm as guilty as anybody else. And the truth of the matter is, looking around, nobody's innocent. Nobody is faultless. The Bible says all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. But in our daily walk and in the things that we do, we need to make sure that we are led by the Spirit of God as He pricks us and guides us through our conscience and teaches us. And as we know things, we should walk accordingly, no matter what the crowd does. And that is difficult. It is difficult. Um, we normally don't like people that walk to the beat of their own drum because you know they're unique or they're standalones. And how many times do we read that Jesus went off to a quiet place alone just so he could pray? Because the crowd was constantly pulling at him to give them something else. Give me, give me, give me, give me. And, and Jesus would go away and, and get alone with God and get his marching orders. And he would come back and he would, you know, we have right there at the end of his life, he says, Nonetheless, not my will, but thine be done. 
That's a good question for us to ask today. Are we walking according to the will of God, His leading, His direction, what He's taught us? Or are we trying to satisfy the crowd, as Pilate did? Let's not release Barabbas today. Let's hold on to Jesus. Let's hold on to the truth. And let's stand for that, no matter the consequences. That's not easy. Not easy at all. And I pray you success in that. Have a blessed day. Pray for us as we have COVID in the house. I don't want it. But if it's going to be my allotment, then uh, we'll deal with it as we get it. But um, praise God, he's given us a large enough house that my son can live in the corner of the basement. And we can throw food at him from the stairs every once in a while. Um, no, we're taking care of him, uh, but pray for us. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I'm Pastor Rusty. I'll talk to you later.